This is the fourth video in the series on how to build an engine in the Card Game Dominion. In this video, we'll talk about action, which is the second key resource that an engine will need. This video is not focusing on action cards per se, although an engine will need many action cards. This is focusing on action or plus action, which is the ability to play action cards. By default, on any given turn, you have the ability to play a single action card, and engines tend to want to play much more than that. So if you want to play additional action cards, you have to generate extra action or extra plus action, the, the right to play further action cards. And so we'll be discussing which cards give you the ability to do that and how to identify them. First, some terminology. You'll notice that there's gonna be a lot of parallels here to draw cards, and that's by design, but there are some key differences as well. Uh, first, a village. A village is just any card that increases the total number of other action cards that you're able to play. A village is to action as draw cards were to draw. You're net increasing the amount of action you have available. Why is it called a village? Well, because many of the cards that function this way literally have village in their names. In the base set, if you've ever played, you're probably familiar with the card village, which just says plus one card, plus two actions. Its main function is to function as a village. It gives you extra action. Now there's further expansions, and many of those often have cards that are variations on village and also have village in their name, like worker's village, plus one card, plus two actions, plus one buy, or mining village, plus one card, plus two actions, and then the ability to trash it for money. And given that a lot of the cards that function as sources of action have village in their name, cards that give extra action have been dubbed villages. This does not mean that a village literally just means any card with village in its name, or even any card that says plus action explicitly in its text. Much like draw cards don't just mean any card that says plus card, we'll see that villages can include many cards that don't necessarily say plus action on them. Secondly, we have terminal action cards. Terminal action cards are to actions as stop cards are to draw. A terminal action card is any action card that if you play it, does not generate any action at all or give you any ability to play further action cards. Mini cards, uh, for example, money lender, remodel, bureaucrat, witch, are terminal action cards. They don't give plus action whatsoever. And then thirdly, again, we have cantrips, which were already defined in the previous video. A cantrip is just a card that says plus one card, plus one action on it. Now let's talk about the principles of action. We'll see there's a principle in play for action that's very similar to the first principle we discussed of draw, which is that every action card that you plan to play has an implicit negative one action on it that you'll need to sort of mentally subtract out if you're trying to evaluate what that card is going to do for you. Makes sense? In order to put an action card into play, you have to expend one action, and so Implicitly, if a card is not gaining you action, it's losing you action because you're spending an action to get that card into play. If I want to play my village, I have to spend an action to do so. If I want to play my money lender, I have to spend an action to do so. By this token, any card uh, that you want to put into play, it's an action card, it requires spending one action. Now notice this is still a little bit different than the principle we discussed for draw. With draw, every card in your deck by necessity is minus one card because you're drawing through your entire deck and all the cards end up in your hand at some point or other over the course of your shuffle, whether you want them to or not. And so every card necessarily is taking up minus one card. That's not the case for action. Treasure cards, for example, do not take up minus one action because you don't have to spend an action to put those treasures into play. You can put your gold, silvers, and coppers into play in your buy phase, whether you have plus action or not. So treasures do not count towards your uh, action total, positively or negatively. Likewise, victory cards, we did say those counted as negative one draw, because you do end up having to draw them, they you know, take up space in your deck. They don't count as negative one action though, because you don't have to spin an action card to put your province into play. In fact, you don't put your province into play at all. And so only action cards will count as having an implicit negative one action. And then only a subset of that. It's not the case that every single action card in your deck necessarily counts as negative one action. Just every action card that you plan to put into play because it's the putting into play that costs the action. So for example, let's say you have a card like Chapel. Chapel has a lot of utility in the early game because it can help trash a bunch of cards. But then at some point, Chapel has outlived its utility. It's run its course and you don't really need to play your Chapel anymore. You've gotten rid of all the cards you want to get rid of and Chapel is just taking up space in your deck. So let's say you're at the point in the game where you've got a Chapel in your deck and you no longer want to play it, but you also have no way to get rid of it. Chapel is going to function as negative one card, because it is a card taking up space in your deck, but you don't need to count it against your total stock of action, 
Because if you don't plan on playing Chapel, then it doesn't matter that it's technically an action card. It's no different from an estate in this regard, because if your strategy does not hinge on playing Chapel, you don't have to plan to expend an action to do so. And so just note that when you're counting up action, every action card that you want to get into play is going to count as an implicit negative one action, because you you have to spend an action to do that, but that does not mean it's equivalent to the total number of actions in your deck. Sometimes you might have some actions, some action cards that you just don't want to play in the first place. You don't need to count those towards your negative one action. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, the second principle of action is again very similar to the second principle of draw, which is that if you want to play your entire deck, then you need to have a balance between villages and terminal action cards. In the same way that you had to have a balance between draw cards and stop cards. For every terminal action card in your deck, every action card that expends an action and doesn't give you any back, you will need at least one village effect or one ability to play an extra action. And those need to balance out. And of course, in the context of action, it, you can't have one more terminal action card than you have village. And that's because you start the turn with the ability to play one action card. So you start with one action. And if you want to play any more action cards, you'll need to generate plus action from there. Kind of like with draw, you start with plus five cards, and if you want to draw any more than five cards on a hand, you'll need to generate draw from there. Now let's look at some examples of cards that do and do not function as action. For starters, let's take a look at this card from the base set, Harbinger. Harbinger says plus one card, plus one action, and it has a little effect where you can check your discard pile and top deck a card from it if you want to. Is Harbinger a source of action? Hopefully by now we can say no, it's not, because although it says plus one action, if I want to play this action card, there's going to be an implicit negative one action attached because I have to spin an action to put it in play. So it's breaking even on the action front. It's also breaking even on the draw front because by virtue of being a card, it takes up one card in my deck. So Harbinger is draw neutral and it's action neutral. All that it's netting me is this little effect. It's a cantrip. At this point, it might be a little bit more obvious why cantrips are both a significant and a common concept on many Dominion cards, which is that it's the way to get a card to be truly neutral. If you have a little effect that you want to print, like look through your discard pile, top deck something, that might be nifty enough that you'd want to do it, but it's also not strong enough to justify the cost inherent to any given card. If you printed a card that just said, look through your discard pile, top deck something, it would be almost unjustifiable to ever buy at really any price point, even free. You wouldn't take a free card if you could that said that, because having that card would A, take up a spot in your deck, and B, cost an action to play, and the minor effect just wouldn't be worth it. So you printed a card like that that has a little minor benefit, it's actually got a lot of drawback uh, in the subtext, and so it would be net worse for your deck than just not having it. So how do you print a card that gives you a little bit of benefit at no other cost? Well the answer is you put plus one card and plus one action on it, because that sort of cancels out the implicit cost of any card. Because now that negative one card is cancelled out by the fact that it draws, the negative one action to put it in play is cancelled out by the plus one action. And so the reason so many cards start with plus one card, plus one action is because the real thing the card is trying to do is give you a little effect and the plus one card, plus one action just guarantees it's giving you effect at no further drawback because otherwise this is the inherent drawback to every action card in your deck. Now let's look at some examples of cards that do function as villages. First, we have the prototypical one, village. Plus one card, plus two actions. Do our mental subtraction of one card, one action. And you'll see that what village is on net is plus one action. Adding a village to your deck gives your deck the ability to play plus one more action card than you otherwise could have. And if you play a village in your turn, you can now play one more action card. So village should be read as plus one action, similar to how laboratory was plus one draw. And we can see a lot of the other cards that function like that have village in their name. Bustling village, plus one card, plus three actions, and a little effect. So bustling village is functionally a source of plus two action. So Bustling Village is like twice as strong as a village is in terms of providing the additional source of action to your deck. And there's a lot of cards like that. We mentioned Worker's Village, Mining Village, Walled Village, Border Village. And a lot of the ones that don't even explicitly have village in the name often have village-esque themes like Hamlet or City or Lost City. And so you'll see that many of these cards can be identified just by their village-related titles and themes. But that doesn't mean you can identify a village just by looking for village themes in the name. Uh, many cards function as villages despite not being on theme. For example, Wandering Minstrel. This is a textbook case of a village. Plus one card, plus two actions, just like village, and then some third additional effect. 
Wandering Minstrel is certainly a village. Adding this card to your deck gives you plus one action. But obviously, Wandering Minstrel is not a village, and I have no idea what this has to do with villages. Just note that Wandering Minstrel is functionally a village, even if thematically it has, is entirely unrelated. And as we said with the draw, village can also not be boiled down to just having plus one action in the text, in the same way that draw cannot be boiled down to having plus one card in the text. There's many cards that can function as villages, despite not saying plus action at all. Let's take a look at a few of those. Throne Room is an example. Throne Room is a card from the base set that lets you play an action card from your hand twice. It might not be initially obvious why this card counts as a village in the first place, or why this even has anything to do with action. Uh, and this is, I think, a card that is often amongst the hardest, if not the hardest, to understand the strategic value of from the base set. But if you think about the way Throne Room works, it is actually, in a more subtle way, a village. And the reason is because if I have two action cards in my hand, and I wanted to play those, I would naturally have to spend two action to do that. But let's say I wanted to get that same effect by having one copy of the two action cards, and then playing Throne Room to play that twice. Well, now I can get the effect of the two action cards by only spending one action. I spend one action on Throne Room, and then as a result of Throne Room, I get to play that card twice, and so now for the cost of one action, I've gotten two action cards into play. So let's say, for example, on every turn in my engine, I wanted to play two Bureaucrats. Bureaucrats is an example of a terminal action card. It doesn't say plus action on it anywhere, uh, and I'll go ahead and tell you, nothing about this gives you action. It just gains two syllables in your deck and attacks your opponent. So let's say I build an engine where my strategy is just going to be to increase my payload each turn by playing two bureaucrats. One way I could do that would be to buy two bureaucrats. I put those bureaucrats in my deck, I draw through my deck every turn, I find the bureaucrats. Well, I need to have plus two action left over to play both of those bureaucrats. So I might have to add, for example, an extra two villages in my deck over and above what I needed otherwise so that I can cover the extra two action required to play two bureaucrats. Alternatively, I could add a throne room and a bureaucrat. And then at the end of my turn, I play the throne room to play that bureaucrat twice. I've now got the same effect as if I had played two bureaucrats, but I only spent one action to play the throne room. And so I could cover the cost of throne room bureaucrat with a single village. And so I'm getting the same benefit of two action cards with a single action card. And so throne room functions as a village in that way, because you're getting two plays of an action with a single cost of playing one action card or putting it into play once. And so Throne Room is functionally an action card. And this is not just for terminal actions. Consider, for example, uh, the following two hands. Let's say I have a hand that's got uh, a draw card like Smithy that just says plus three, uh, plus three card on it. And then I've got two Harbingers, so two cantrips, and maybe some treasures. And I want to start drawing through my deck. What if I played the two Harbingers and then I played the Smithy? What's going to happen? Well, if I play the two Harbingers, I break even, right? They cost me an action, then I get an action back. They cost me a card because they're taking space, and I draw a card back. So after playing the two cards on both Harbingers, I now have, I still have a five card hand. I still have one action to spin. Maybe I've drawn two treasures, and now I have my Smithy. Well, my Smithy is a terminal action card. Smithy just says plus three cards and nothing else. So if I play that Smithy, my turn is going to come to a stop right there. And that's a little unfortunate, because if I play that card, even if I draw more cards with my smithy, I can't keep playing them because I'm out of action. And so I am in this awkward spot of, I've got a smithy, but I've got no village, I play my terminal action, it terminates my turn. That's how your terminal actions get their name. But now let's say, instead of uh, smithy, harbinger, harbinger treasures, I had a deck that was, uh, a hand that was smithy, throne room, harbinger treasures. Now how could I play my hand? I could play Throne Room to play Harbinger twice. And so what's going to happen? I'm still going to draw two cards, right? Because I'm playing Harbinger twice. So I draw two cards. I'm still breaking even on cards because I had five cards in hand, Smithy, Throne Room, Harbinger, two treasures. I spent, uh, I removed two cards from my hand, Throne Room and Harbinger, and I drew two back. So I'm still at five cards now. But now how many actions do I have? Well, I'm getting plus two action, because I'm playing Harbinger twice, and each Harbinger play gives me plus one action, but I only spent one action doing this. I had to spin one action to play Throne Room, and then the Throne Room played the Harbinger twice automatically. And so, at the end of this little sequence, I now have five cards in hand, but I have two action. 
And so now if I play that smithy, I actually don't end my turn. If I draw more action cards, I can continue to play on. So that's, I think, a concrete example of how throne room can function as a village. I wanted to have a village in play so that I could play my smithy without ending my turn. In lieu of the, the village, I just used a throne room to generate extra action. So throne room is very subtly actually a pretty good village and one of the stronger cards in the base set as a result. Here's another example of a card that functions that way, Golem. Uh, Golem, you reveal cards from your deck until you find two action cards, and then you put them both into play. So Golem is, again, along the same lines as Throne Room, a village, because you play Golem, which costs one action, and then as a result, you're getting to immediately play two action cards at no additional action cost. So you're getting two action cards into play, only spending one action. You're netting yourself the ability to play more action cards than you could have otherwise, Golem is a village despite not playing, uh, despite not caught, despite not saying plus action. Um, uh, now some bonus info, Golem is also a draw card despite not saying plus card. Why? Because you play one card from your hand, Golem, it took up one card to draw, and then Golem immediately goes and grabs two cards out of your deck and puts them straight into play. So you never had to spin the negative one card in the first place of drawing those cards in your hand to then play them. Uh, you get two cards straight into play. So Golem is also plus one draw. And so Golem is like plus one card and plus one action. And so it seems pretty strong. Spoiler, it's not. It's actually a pretty weak card for uh, other reasons we won't get into now. But Golem does count, functionally speaking, as plus one card, plus one action, despite saying neither. Now, uh, a few more examples worth uh, touching on. First, it doesn't need to be an action card to be a village. Here's an example of a treasure that can function as a village. Uh, Coin of the Realm. Uh, so this card, you play it like a treasure card in your buy phase. You put the treasure into play, and when you do that, you put it on a tavern mat. And then later on, let's say next turn, you can call that from your tavern mat whenever you want to, and you'll get plus two actions as a result. So Coin of the Realm gives you plus action. Now note that with Village, you know, Village gave plus two action, and we had to mentally uh, subtract minus one action, because it takes an action to put Village into play. So Village is plus one. So you might be thinking, oh, Coin Room, uh, Coin Room, Coin of the Realm, <laughs> that's uh, also plus two action, so it's functionally plus one. In this case, Coin of the Realm is actually netting you plus two action, because you don't have to spend an action to put Coin of the Realm in play. Coin of the Realm is a treasure and you can play treasures for free in your buy phase. So Coin of the Realm costs zero action and nets you two action. So Coin of the Realm is functionally like two actions. And, and there's some caveats to that that we might get to in later videos when we discuss duration cards and other cards that stay out turn to turn. Uh, but just note that functionally speaking, Coin of the Realm is plus two action because it doesn't have the implicit negative one action cost. Um, now it is minus one draw, right? Coin, Coin of the Realm, unlike Village, doesn't give you plus one card. So Coin of the Realm was like plus two action, but minus one draw, and so it does have its drawbacks as well. Uh, next, another card to look at is Acting Troop. Uh, here's an example of a card that gives Villagers. If you're not familiar, Villagers are an effect that shows up in some later expansions, and basically what a Villager is, is just, it's like an action that you can bank from turn to turn. So normally what happens in a game of Dominion is you start out with one action on your turn, and then you can use that to play action cards until you're done. But if you have leftover action, you don't get to, to roll that over to your next turn. Next turn you start again with plus one action. Villagers are like action, except they do roll over. You just have a, a supply of villagers and then you spin them when needed. So acting troop is functionally like plus four action um, minus the one to play it. So read uh, acting troop as netting you three actions. But the benefit of acting troop is you can play the, you can use those actions whenever you want. So maybe you trash the acting troop early, get your plus action, and then you spin those later. So action troop is functionally plus three action, but with the benefit of um, a lot more flexibility. And then lastly, here's a tricky one. I'll give you a second to take a guess if you want. How does vassal function? Is this a terminal action? Is it a village? What's going on here? So here's the answer. Vassal, uh, if played appropriately, is actually not a terminal action, nor is it a village though. Um, we noticed that kind of like bureaucrat, vassal doesn't have any text that says plus action on it, but it does have this effect that says you can discard the top of your deck uh, and then if it's an action card, you can play it. So it's 
you got this sort of throne room thing going on where you're putting an action card directly into play with the effect of Vassal, so you're saving yourself an action. Unlike throne room, it's not playing it twice. Vassal is only playing the card once. So Vassal is not a village uh, because it doesn't play two actions or play a, a single action card twice for you, but it also does not count as a terminal action card, at least on turns where you successfully discard an action card. If your vassal discards a silver from the top of your deck or an estate, yeah, that's terminal action card. You get plus two coins, you discarded a card, that's it. So vassal is sometimes terminal. But if your vassal hits an action card, then it's functionally breaking even on actions because you're able to, you spent one action playing vassal and then you put another action card into play. So you got sort of net one action um, from the play. You spent one action playing vassal itself. And so vassal is breaking even if it can find an action card. For example, imagine there was a harbinger on the top of your deck. So you've got a five card hand with vassal in it. Uh, you play vassal, it sees harbinger, you play harbinger, you spent an action playing vassal, you got an action back because it played harbinger, you're back at one action. So your vassal broke even on action. And so vassal is an example of a card that provided the effect is able to be lined up, uh, is not costing you action, um, but it would be terminal otherwise. And then lastly, again, let's look at some events. There's plenty of events that give you action in various ways. Here we have Lost Arts, the action counterpart to Pathfinding. Uh, with Lost Arts, you can put a plus one action token on any supply pile, and then that card, whenever you play it, gives you an extra plus one action. So if you put plus one action on Harbinger, it would now have plus one card plus two actions and it would function as a village. You put Lost Arts on Bustling Village, plus one card plus four action, and then that would function as plus three actions on net. So obviously this is a pretty good source of uh, action. And then uh, here's another example. This one is perhaps a little bit non-obvious. What about Delay? Delay is a card from the most recent expansion. Uh, delay can function as a village. So notice um, you set aside a card um, from your hand, an action card, and the start of your next turn you play it. It's not costing you an action, right? The, the delay, uh, the effect of delay is to play that action card automatically. You don't have to spin the action to do that. You're just immediately playing that action card at the start of your turn. So if you spin to buy on delay to delay that action card, you're getting to play an action without spending any action. So delay can function as a village because it's increasing the number of action cards you can play by one um, relative to the number of action you have. If, for example, I have a bunch of surplus buys, I could just delay a bunch of cards to the next turn, uh, and then next turn I'd be playing like five or six actions, even if I, or action cards, even if I only had one action to spend. And so delay actually does have a village effect. Uh, for example, again, let's go back to our cantrip card. We said Harbinger itself is not a village. Right? It's just plus one card, plus one action. But what if I have a leftover Harbinger in my hand and I choose to delay it? I spend one of my buys setting aside Harbinger with the intent of playing it next turn. Now roll, no, next turn rolls around and I start my turn. And so immediately as an effective delay, Harbinger gets played. So I draw one extra card and then I get plus one extra action. So now before I've played my first extra, before I've even played my first action from my hand, I have my starting plus one action that you start every turn with, and I've got the plus one action from Harbinger. So I'm now at plus two action. So you can see how this card that otherwise was a cantrip that only broke even, when it's delayed with this effect, ends up getting you on net um, an extra action. And so you can think of delay as being plus one action for that reason. And then last and probably least, you have Necropolis. This is one of the shelters, the three cards that you can optionally start with in lieu of estates. Uh, shelter functions as a village because it says plus two action on it. It's a really weak village, but it is technically village. Sometimes the only village in the entire kingdom is your necropolis, and so you're capped at functionally two actions. Your one action plus the net one action that necropolis gets you, and so sometimes you don't trash necropolis even if you can, just because it can function as a village if need be, albeit a pretty weak one. So now let's put those principles into practice and analyze a kingdom. Uh, here we have a kingdom that I've already played through a bit to get a particular deck state. And we'll look at this deck and see how it's doing, this time not in terms of the amount of draw it has, but how much action. So we'll go through each card in turn. The easiest, let's start with the treasures. We did say treasures were minus one when we're counting up draw because they take up space in the deck, but they don't count against our action total because we don't have to spend an action to play treasures. So even though we have six treasures here, they're entirely neutral, we can ignore them. Are there any other actions we can also ignore? 
Remember we said if an action is neutral, then it's going to count neither for nor against. Uh, here we have an example, market. Market's a cantrip, plus one card, plus one action. It's breaking even. We can ignore the markets. They will neither net increase nor decrease the total amount of action cards we can play. Likewise, forum. Uh, we said earlier forum is net neutral with respect to draw in the previous video. It's also neutral with respect to action. It costs one action to play, gets one action back. Forum neither increases nor decreases the total amount of action cards you can play. And then lastly, stable. This is a third card that's neutral with respect to action. This one actually does net you, uh, in total, a, t a positive draw. It stables is in minus one uh, naturally for draw and discards the treasure, which is a second, so minus two. But it draws you three cards, so stables is net one draw and neutral in actions. So we can ignore stables for the purpose of counting up our actions. Uh, so now let's look at the rest of these. We have five villages here, and we said each village is plus one action. So with five villages, we have plus five action. And then the rest of these cards, uh, the rest are all going to be terminal. So for example, black cat doesn't say plus action anywhere. It does say plus two cards. So black cat is positive for draw. Black cat is plus one draw on net, but without any actions, it's minus one action. So you should read black cat as functionally being plus one card plus uh, sorry plus one card minus one action because that's what black cat is doing for your deck once you've accounted for the sort of implicit costs. Likewise, chapel nothing about action. Trash will card from your hand, but it costs an action to do so. So chapel is terminal. Bandit, another terminal action card. Gain a gold, attack opponent. Bandit's the terminal action card. Uh, Mountebank is our last example. Mountebank, one more terminal action card. Uh, so now, does this deck have enough action to support all the action cards that it wants to play? The one last question we'll have to ask is, do we want to play all these action cards in the first place? Because we said an action card only counts against, uh, counts against the total amount of action that we need if we plan to play it. Because the cost from action is not like draw inherent to you know every time you draw your deck you're drawing the card it only comes about if you play the card so if for example we don't want to play any particular number of these cards we don't have to count them against our action total any cards that meet that requirement uh, let's just say tentatively that we don't plan to play chapel for the sake of demonstration we've already got rid of the bad cards in our deck and so there's nothing that we plan to trash next turn so let's just uh for the moment plan on not playing our chapel. You might need to play chapel anyway. Let's say your opponent attacks you with a mountain bank and gives you some unexpected junk. There could be scenarios where that might change, but for the sake of this example, we'll say we don't plan on playing chapel, but we do plan on playing the rest of our terminal action cards. We want to attack our opponent with a mountain bank, we want to gain a gold, and we probably plan on playing our draw cards to draw those cards in the first place. So we want to play the other six terminal action cards, the three black cats, the bandit, and the two mountain banks, do we have enough action to support that? We've got five action from the villages, and we start with plus one action at the start of every turn. You naturally can play one action card. So with one action card plus five more villages, we should be able to cover exactly the amount of terminal action cards we want to play. So now let's play through a hand with this deck and see if our predictions hold. We said that we have just enough action to cover all of our terminal action cards except the chapel, so we should be able to get everything except for the chapel into play. I'll play a village. Notice how the action goes from one to two, which is what we thought. Village is plus one action. I'll play the black cat, which is minus one action. Goes back down to one. Play some markets, play a stables, play a forum. Remember, these are all neutral. So as we would expect, the total action count that I have is not changing, no matter how many of these that I play. And so now it's just a matter of drawing through the deck Maybe I want to play some more black cats, so I'll have to play a village first to cover the action cost of the black cat. Play another village, so I can play another black cat. I'll play a village. Now I can play my mountebank, or not my mountebank, my bandit, which is a terminal action. Play the village, and sure enough, I have two actions, so I can play my last two mountebanks. The chapel remains unplayed, but that is what we expected. So now let's say I want to add some cards to this deck. What if I decide that Two mountain bank attacks is not enough, <clears throat> and I want to ramp it up to three. Well, I could buy a mountain bank, but if I've bought this mountain bank, well, I now have an additional terminal action card in my deck. And we just said that the deck was just breaking even with all the action cards I wanted to play. Um, all the terminal action cards were just accounted for by the number of villages I had. So if I bought this mountain bank, I would have to buy a village. Uh, so I added one terminal action card, so minus one action. I added another village, plus one action. 
now I'm still breaking even, at least in terms of actions. And so based on this, I should still be able to, uh, to draw the whole deck, or not to draw the deck, to play the whole deck. We're not talking about cards here, we're talking about action. So I was just um, playing exactly as many actions as I could before, um, with no actions left over. I should still be able to do that um, here. But let's say I want to do this a different way. I'll just undo those last two buys. I could, instead of buying a mount to make and a village, I could just buy a throne room. Remember, we said throne room functions as a village, and here will be a demonstration of that. I want to get three mountain bank plays in, but instead of having three mountain banks, I could have two mountain banks and use a throne room to play one of them twice, and I'm still getting the same effect. And we said throne room is a village, so if I'm right, that should take fewer actions. Three mountain banks would require three actions. Uh, how much does it take to play uh, one mountain bank once and the other one twice? The answer for that is two. I spend one action playing the first mountain bank. I spend one action playing the throne room, which then automatically plays the other mountain bank twice. So I spent two actions and got three mountain bank plays. So if I get that third mountain bank play in by buying a throne room and using the throne room on the mountain bank, I won't need to buy a village to cover it. And now I do know I was just barely drawing my deck. And so if I'm worried about drawing still, I might need to add some draw, right? This card is taking up one more spot in my deck. And I know that my bandit is gaining me a gold each turn. Uh, so I've got at least two more draw that's gonna need to be covered. So let's say I wanna add another draw card. Well, if I add two more black cats, that could cover my draw because black cat is plus one card each. But black cat is also minus one action. So if I added two more black cats to make sure I'm balanced on draw, my action count is not gonna be out of proportion. I'll be down again. So if I wanted to add two more black cats to cover the, the draw that I'm expecting, I would also need to buy villages. I don't have enough buys for that. So what else could I do? Well, I could, for, I mean, I could resolve that problem with throne room as well. Um, but let's just say I want to resolve it a different way. Um, we got stables here. Stables, we said, is also plus one draw, just like black cat. Draw is three, uh, it counts as negative one, and it discards one. You're getting net one draw, same as black cat. The difference is stables is net neutral in action, right? It covers its own action cost. So if I decide to draw using, say, two stables, then I now don't need to get villages to support that. So, for example, I have a buy left over. Um, I could, I, well, I could buy a market. Throne room, just as a little effect, gets you a, an extra buy for free. So I could buy a throne room, throne room for free at no buy cost and then buy a market. And uh, now let's see if the deck plays out like we expected. So play the forum, play the village, play the black cat, and draw through our deck. And what we want to look for here is to see whether or not we're still even on actions at the end of this whole process. So we can play our bandit, play our market. And so here we are where we were last time. Remember, we drew our whole deck. Um, this time we draw one more gold because we've got one more gold from bandit. We've got two mountain banks and we have two actions left. So remember, if this were three mountain banks, we wouldn't be able to play all three. We've got this throne room. So I can play one mountain bank and I can use my last action, play the throne room, play the other mountain bank twice. And I get uh, three mountain bank plays in for the cost of two actions. And so hopefully this demonstrates uh, how keeping track of your actions as well as your draw helps you keep a balanced uh, engine. If I know that I'm adding additional terminal actions, I know I need to add additional villages to support it, I'm adding extra cards, I need to add extra draw to support it. And this is why it's important to both understand the importance of draw an action in a deck and also be able to correctly evaluate how much draw a given card provides. You need to know that stables functions as plus one draw so you can know that one stables can cover the cost of adding one stop card. You need to know that mountain bank counts as minus one uh, action, so you can know that getting a new mountain bank requires getting another village, which is plus one action. And so hopefully uh, this video has helped you in understanding the concepts of action and draw, and so you can more accurately count for those. 
In the next video, we'll talk about trashing, which is the third component in an engine.